And Mr. Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was asked here to talk about what it was like being dyslexic. Um, I'll say that for me, uh, first let me just say that I didn't prepare a statement because the last time I tried to read aloud from a prepared statement, my whole fifth grade class laughed at me. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I'm just going to be brief and speak from the heart. Uh, Dr. Shaywitz asked me to come here and talk about what it was like, and uh, I, I will define it in one phrase that my teacher used to say to me in elementary school, which is, you can do it, you just don't want to do it. Now, I grew up on the west side of LA in a very expensive private school. I had the best that the system could give me, and it wasn't enough. And I think the most important thing to discuss here is the psychological and emotional damage dyslexia causes, more than the learning disability, is the blow to your self-esteem. Because once you're in that hole, it can take you the rest of your life to climb out. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating for a child to work twice as hard as the other kids, but to do half as well. Uh, eventually, kids start to buy into the narrative, as I did. Well, maybe I'm just dumb. Uh, I'm clearly not lazy. Uh, I'm not undisciplined. And when my teacher would say, well, I'm just going to whip you into shape, I would think, well, yeah, that's exactly what I need is a whipping. I was very lucky because I had one of the best moms ever. And I don't know how she knew about dyslexia in the late 70s, early 80s. She, she took that secret to her grave, but somehow she knew about it. She made sure that I was diagnosed, tested, and then she met with all my teachers and made them understand that me being the class clown and the troublemaker was my way of compensating for these horrible feelings of low self-worth. So she set in place therapies that helped me, like taking an untimed test. An untimed test reduces the amount of anxiety that it gives a kid, because that's the problem with dyslexic kids. So much of it isn't the learning disability, it's the anxiety that it causes, which shuts down everything. So untimed test was important. Uh, audiobooks, back in the day, there were not many audiobooks. So my mother took my whole school reading list every year to the Braille Institute for the Blind, had them read onto audiobooks. So that way I listened to my school curriculum, otherwise I wouldn't have passed. Most importantly, she made sure that my teachers knew that I was trying and I was doing my best. And this was not some sort of voluntary screwing around. That helped me get through. <clears throat> and as a result, not only have I had success as an author, uh, dyslexia has shown me to be a gift. Because I can't simply memorize facts and regurgitate them. I have to understand them. Because I have to understand them and understand the broader context in which they exist, it's made me a big picture, outside the box thinker. And that manner of thinking has got me invited to speak at places like the Naval War College and West Point, hurricane re rehearsal of concept drills, the US Army's vibrant response, and a few strategic studies groups that I don't think I'm allowed to talk about here. <laughs> it is a gift. And we can turn so many of these kids around. Because that's the problem, is that they start to believe, well, if the system has no value with me, I'm going to have no value for the system. I'm going to drop out. And they fill our streets, and they fill our jails, and they suck off the system for the rest of their lives, because they don't feel they can contribute. And all we need to do is identify it and recognize it at the early level. And we can turn these kids around, as we've all discussed. These are the creative thinkers. These are the engines of what we used to call Yankee ingenuity. How many Einsteins do we have sitting in our schools right now staring out the window because they think they have nothing to contribute? That's all it takes. And, and look, I understand as a member of Congress, you have people coming to you every day saying, listen, we have a problem and it will cost you $500 million a day. <laughs> this can be solved and it's one of the few problems you face as a member of Congress that can be solved easily and relatively quickly. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brooks.